This is really the first time that there's been a cross-border collaboration on these particular issues uh, 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 for the Society of Jesus. We've done a lot of cross-border work in terms of Ignatian spirituality, but in talking about these issues, social, political, and economic issues, uh, what Peter has done with a faith that does justice uh, is, is a first for our group in Tijuana and for us in Tijuana. Tonight we're gonna to talk about cross-border migration from a spiritual perspective based on the reality that St. Ignatius asked us to look very closely at. Um, the scriptural passage, as you know, is I was a foreigner and you offered me your house. We're really talking about in terms of migration something that dates over 60,000 years ago when people began to migrate from what is now known as Africa uh, into Arabia. That was 60,000 years ago. It was a normal process of people migrating north. There weren't any borders. There weren't any organizations like the Homeland Security military personnel in each country. Now, yearly, over 250 million people are forced to migrate. And, and I underline the word forced. Mostly compounded today by the wars in the Middle East. You know, I remember not too long ago, just around the corner virtually, the children were being incarcerated for having reached the United States border. Children were drowning in the Mediterranean Sea. Something that's kind of unheard of in terms of what our own value system would like to represent. So the first spiritual affirmation of mine would be clearly this is not God's will for the world. Clearly this is not God's will for the world. In fact today developing countries host about 86 percent of the world's refugees. Developing countries, I'm not talking about the United States, I'm talking about developing countries. In developing countries with little or no funding to be able to attend adequately to the refugees who are seeking asylum in their countries. While developed countries like the United States propose to build higher walls, more barbed wire fences, incarcerate children refugees, destroy without prior notice refugee camps, so they're forced to migrate elsewhere or become invisible or go into hiding. Let's try to define what we would call today social sin or systemic sinfulness. They lead to the structures that violate human dignity stifle freedom or impose gross inequality. It wasn't a concept that Ignatius uh, necessarily employed in his first principle and foundation. But it is implied. In Mexico, Back in 1994, when the NAFTA agreement was signed, the North American Free Trade Agreement, and the beginning of the Zapatista Revolution, in response to the signing of the North America Free Trade Agreement, from 1994 to the year 2000, only six years went by, the basic bread basket, what we call la canasta básica, or the cost of basic food staples, rose 125% in six years. 
Remember, one of the things that Bill Clinton and Carlos Salinas de Gortari squawked about was with the signing of the North American Free Trade Agreement between Canada, Mexico, and the United States, Mexico would no longer export people but manufactured goods and people would stay. The exact opposite has happened. Mexico has exported, if you want to use that term, or allowed to leave more people since NAFTA than before NAFTA was ever signed. Coming up here, I would hear again, over and over again, people say, I have to leave for the good of my family and so I could develop myself as a person. I have to leave. Life is no longer viable in my place of origin. That's a horrible thing to have to say. Millions of people cannot do that. They simply cannot go back to their birthplace, to their origins, and enjoy what makes up so big a part of their own hearts because they've been forced to move elsewhere. And then, and then, they're called rapists, murderers, criminals, and illegals. I mean, to add pain to pain. It's, it's, it, that's what structural sin or systemic sinfulness is all about. A refugee is somebody with a well-founded fear of being persecuted for reasons of race, religion, membership in a particular social or political group, or someone escaping extreme poverty. The thing is that now we're talking about whole families that are struggling for their basic security and well-being. Children are deserting schools because of violence. Others can't work because of violence. The cartels can leverage themselves against whole families, which provokes a, a fear factor, where they come to the conclusion that if I leave, I'm illegal. If I stay, the consequences could be very severe for my whole family. Yep. There is a common community of all people. Building bridges, not walls, in the face of social sin, greed, corruption, and uncontrollable political ambitions can lead one to characterize others as non-persons or less than human or rapists or criminals when all they want is adequate health care, a good education, and protection from persecution by organized criminal groups, using instruments of terror, murder, and kidnapping. We need political courage that accepts the obligation to protect the most vulnerable members of our society. They're not desechables. Desechables, I don't know an adequate translation for that. They're not like throwaways, like the paper plates. What would, you, what would the translation be? Disposable. Disposable. Many are made to feel and act as though they were invisible. I want to propose a few things before I end. First, either there be a new U.S. policy to protect our hemisphere's refugees, and simultaneously, and simultaneously is the second thing, work to transform the conditions that migrants are fleeing in their own home countries. When I talked about corruption, political ambition, I'm, always, I'm also talking about, for example, in Mexico, that the Pope was very clear about during his visit just a few weeks ago. So two things, either there be a new US policy to protect our hemisphere's refugees and at the same time work to transform the conditions that migrants are fleeing in their own home country, or this is never, never going to be solved. In fact, it's going to get worse. The magnitude of the problem is so great, and the pieces that are in place are so strong. 
you'll probably watch TV when you go home tonight and you'll see it. it's really kind of sad what's going on. He said, my God, what can we do? I think if you just spread the word of some of what you might have heard tonight from what Peter said and what I've said, I think we just spread, spread the word, you know, on a one-to-one -one basis. It's got to change people's minds and hearts. It really does. It's the, so we don't keep going down this dark road of uh, the accusatory thing of, you know, you're you know, a rapist, a criminal, you're illegal, you should get out of here. International protection and humanitarian assistance to victims. You know, we can do that. The United Nations could do that. If the United Nations could be monitoring as of three days ago every single boat that goes in and out of the harbors of North Korea, for God's sakes, then we could offer protection and humanitarian assistance to victims worldwide. We could do that. Second, the importance of recognizing the value of family reunification. Temporary worker and student work visa programs, the DREAM Act, for example, for the students. And finally, in Mexico, hope that the pieces fall in place so that taxes can be collected on the wealthy and someday corruption could be eradicated. The Pope spoke very strongly about those two things while he was there. We may not be able to do that. I don't think anybody in this room can influence in any of those four things I mentioned, but I want to put those out there as kind of the things that I would shoot for or strive for. Most recently, Adolfo Nicolás, the Jesuit Superior General, our boss over in Rome, advised in an interview with America, I quote, try to enjoy silence. If you come to enjoy silence, being alone, then you'll find out that you're not alone. Then you could start a conversation. The end of quote. This conversation, charitable, just, action oriented, informed by love, reflection, and respect is what our nation needs. Let us look within, then reach out and begin. Thank you very much.